would like to waive extradition, go back to New Hampshire and answer to the charges? That's right. Steve Reed was born in Concord, New Hampshire, in 1955, to William and Peggy Ann Reed. In South Concord, Steve grew up in a loving, lively home, where he gained a wonderful education, non-stop dedication, and a willingness to go above and beyond the call of duty. In 1973, Steve graduated from Concord High School after attending Concord schools for several years. A keen athlete, he was a defensive back on the CHS football team, where he made three interceptions in one game. Upon graduating in 1978, with the highest honors, he studied at the University of Notre Dame, where he earned a degree in English. Having received full scholarships to several law schools, Steve eventually decided to pursue a career in public service by joining the Peace Corps as a volunteer. Steve served in the Peace Corps for four years in West Africa. His first overseas assignment took him to the small town of Madawa, in Niger, in West Africa, where he taught English to the locals. During that time, he met Wendy, the woman who would become his future wife and soulmate. In 1956, Wendy Pasgo, was born as the eldest daughter, of Bila, and Poco Pasgo. Though Wendy was raised in Togo, both of her parents, were originally, from Burkina Faso. And as the daughter of a prominent pastor, a deep-seated faith was ingrained in her as a child. A faith that she has maintained throughout her adorable life. Her father broke the family's traditions, nurtured and supported his daughter's love for basketball in a way that encouraged her to achieve an international career at a young age. She traveled worldwide with the Togolese national basketball team, competing in international competitions in Lagos, Cairo, Paris, Beijing, Shanghai, and Brazzaville. She also won awards and medals in Tunis, Dakar, Mexico City, and Yamasukro. Wendy then applied for scholarships to attend college in the United States, which she later earned. As an undergraduate student in Washington, D.C., Wendy was introduced to Steve by a mutual friend who told her that Steve spoke, house and Parisian French, well enough to meet Wendy's conversational standards. After meeting Steve, Wendy went from disbelief, to amazement. Despite being as introverted and reserved, as Steve, they made a dynamic bear, that came out of each other's strengths, and brought out the best in each other. The Pasco and Reed families undoubtedly recognized Wendy and Steve's true love, and blessed their marriage in 1984 in Senegal. And in 1986, the couple welcomed Lindsay Reed, their first child, and in 1990, Brian Reed, their second child. They provided their two children with a rich cultural childhood, building in them, a sense of love of humanity, a strong work ethic, and a sense of Pride. Having been promoted to Associate Director of the Peace Corps in Senegal, Steve managed many projects addressing reforestation, water supply, and community development. He eventually left the Peace Corps to attend Syracuse University to pursue a master's degree in public administration, while Wendy worked to support their growing family. In 1989, Steve was recruited by the U.S. Agency for International Development to work with a local, non-governmental organization, headquartered in Burkina Faso, dedicated to addressing the interrelated issues of climate change and food security in West Africa. As an English speaker, Wendy worked first as a personal assistant, and later as a community officer for the American Embassy. Always respectful of local people and cultures, Steve was an exceptional leader of multicultural teams. Being humble, hardworking, and compassionate, he easily gained the respect, love, admiration, and trust of those he served. As he pursued his long career, Steve could always count on his wife's love and support throughout his life. Later, they moved to Burlington, Vermont, where Steve served as a senior associate for democracy and governance, at ARD. And Wendy worked as a program coordinator, at Vermont Refugee Assistance. During their assignment in Haiti in 2009, Steve worked on a USAID funded project to increase transparency and collaboration, among municipalities. 
During the devastating 2010 earthquake in Port-au-Prince, Steve and Wendy were there, and unlike most foreigners, they didn't evacuate the country. During the earthquake, Steve helped get the most damaged cities back on their feet, and Wendy helped protect people living on the streets. And after retiring from Niger in 2019, Steve and Wendy were finally able to return home to Concord. They intended to spend the remainder of their lives with their family and old friends, whom they loved so much. In spite of several decades of not playing tennis, Steve returned to playing and enjoyed the challenges and fellowship of playing doubles competitions. After the pandemic span on outdoor activities, Steve and Wendy hiked together on Concord's vast trail system. And as the evening of April 18th, 2022, was a beautifully sunny day, the Reeds decided to leave their Alton Woods apartment complex at approximately 2.20 p.m. With less than an hour to spare, they headed for a walk leading them to the broken ground trails off Portsmouth Street in Concord. After that, family and friends never heard from, or saw them again. So their son, Brian, reported his parents missing on April 20th. And when a police officer investigating the couple's disappearance on April 20th got in touch with a man living in the woods, who identified himself as Arthur Kelly, a couple of days later, his campsite was abandoned. However, police found spent shell casings similar to those at the Reed's crime scene. Police urged people to come forward with information, and to contact Arthur Kelly for more questions. Arthur never answered the call, but a woman came forward saying she was walking her dog, on April 18th when the Reeds passed her on the trail. Minutes later, she heard gunshots. Then she saw a young man carrying a shopping bag looking into the woods toward where the bodies were found. The man walked by her quietly, and after she passed him, she turned to look back, and he was staring at her, so she kept going and never saw the man again. Residents also reported that a young homeless man, was spotted in the area multiple times, between November 2021, and April 2022. They tried to gather information about him, which they could from video surveillance in the area, but they had no name. Police did not have a name until September, when a bank provided information about purchases made using a debit card. And that led them to an online retailer of dietary supplements, identifying the buyer as Clegg. Looking for Logan Clegg, they found that he was booked in Utah for burglary in 2020, and his booking photo matched that of a man that police had spoken to in Concord named Arthur Kelly. As they continue investigating the killings, they try to put a timeline together, and learn more about Logan Clegg. A man with a long criminal record. When Clegg was 22 and homeless, he stabbed Corey Ward to death in May 2018, in Spokane, but authorities ruled it self-defense. In his statement to Spokane police at the time, Clegg stated he was walking to work at McDonald's third shift, when Corey Ward, 28, yelled at him, calling him names, and was coming out to fight him. Corey then attacked him, so Clegg stabbed him with a small knife to defend himself and kept walking to work, thinking Corey wasn't badly hurt. Ward's mother believes Clegg was trying to steal her son's car, and that's why Corey rushed outside shirtless to confront Clegg, at close to midnight, after he had already gone to bed. Then, in August 2020, Clegg was arrested in Salt Lake City, after a stolen firearm, was found in his waistband, and was charged with shoplifting at a Walmart. In October of the same year, Clegg was arrested again for a stolen firearm, and a set of lockpicks in Logan, Utah. Police in South Burlington, Vermont, filed an affidavit alleging that Clegg was sentenced to probation on November 9 with the conditions that he spends 72 days in jail, maintain employment, and keeps in contact with the office. But in June 2021, he flew from Chicago to Lisbon and failed to report to a youth adult probation and parole meeting. After this, he was not seen for more than a year. They issued an arrest warrant for him, but little did they know that Clegg had already returned to the country, in November 2021. Then, in April 2022, he was again in trouble, but this time for, a vicious double homicide. 
a sketch of a person of interest in the shooting deaths was released in May 2022. And in October, Concord police received information that Clegg had purchased a one-way ticket from New York to Berlin. The flight was scheduled for October 14, but he was already in custody without incident in South Burlington, Vermont, on the 12th. Clegg said he had lived in Concord and worked at McDonald's, but denied living in a tent, going by the name Arthur Kelly, talking to police, having a gun, or killing the Reeds. And finally, on October 13, Clegg appeared in court and was ordered to be held without bail on a probation violation out of Utah. On October 19, Clegg was arrested and charged with two counts of second-degree murder for the deaths of the Reeds. Earlier in the day, a bail hearing was ordered for Clegg on the Utah charges, after the Vermont Supreme Court dismissed his appeal for bail. Finally, this remarkable couple will be remembered for their humanitarian efforts. Throughout their lifetime, their contribution to a better world has left an indelible mark on the lives of many people around the globe, their children, and all those who knew them, making them memorable figures in many people's lives.